Hey everyone. Today I've got something really useful for you all. Now, you know me, I normally go straight into things. I hate waffling on tutorial videos. I absolutely hate it, but please bear with me for a couple of minutes. First, I want to give you a little background on what this video is about. As you know, I've been creating these tutorials and often with free brushes for ZBrush for quite some time now, a couple of years. It's been great and I'm very grateful for all the support you've shown me. As you may or may not know, I also teach ZBrush online, both private lessons and evening classes and often postgrad courses. During these courses, I try to encourage my students to make their own brushes, as I believe teaching someone how to do something themselves is better for them in the long term rather than me just doing everything for them. I've often told my students that they can potentially even sell their brushes online if they want, as an effort to encourage them to make some for themselves. And the question recently came up, well, how much can I expect to sell? And I basically had no answer. I always give my brushes out for free and will always continue to do that in the future. But in order to have some sort of metric that I can give future students, I need to run an experiment. So that's what this tutorial is. I've previously shown how to make a curve brush with knots in them. And now I'm going to show you how to make your own curve brushes with knots on the end, which are also unwrapped and can have tiling alphas along them so you can get lots of different textures. To keep this video as short as I can, I'm just going to leave a link to the first video in the card above right now and also in the description. So yeah, the brush I'm talking about actually allows you to create detailed ropes with knots on each end, fully unwrapped and ready to use in your ZBrush projects. You can use any tiling alpha that you wish and that should work across all of these brushes. So I'm going to show you how these brushes were made, but I'm also going to put a link to where you can download the one I've made, which you can buy for the princely sum of two euro. That's the lowest price I can put it on online. They won't let you put it on any lower. So you have two options. You can either buy it and support me and give me some interesting metrics that I can give to future students, or you can just watch the tutorial and do it all yourself. So I promise in a future video to show you how many downloads there are of this brush versus all the other free ones so you can see yourself. And it should prove interesting for anyone else looking to create content that they can sell. So this is the only brush I'm offering for sale on my channel. I want to emphasize that the only reason I'm charging for it is to gather metrics and data for my students. I want to give them a realistic idea of what kind of sales they can expect if they decide to create and sell similar style brushes in the future, nothing more. I'm probably going to get lambasted for doing this, but hey, like I said, you can watch the tutorial yourself if you don't want to buy it. Hopefully you'll weigh up the two euro this costs versus the time it takes to make it yourself. I hope you all understand the purpose behind this experiment and appreciate the transparency I'm trying to show here. I'm genuinely fascinated to see how this plays out and to share the results with you all. And remember, this is the only one I'm ever going to sell. Everything else will be free from now and into the future. So I hope you understand. So if you go to my Gumroad page, you can see my previous brushes and the tutorials that go with them. And you can see that there are one, two, three, four here related to ropes. And I'll just go through them very quickly. The first one, this one, will basically show you how to make a straight rope and not much else. But you can see that this actually is geometry and it, the rope ends nicely. The second one shows you how to create knots. I'm going to put all of these in the description. The third one will then take that knot and then show you how to apply that previous rope texture to that. The last one shows you how to take these knots that you've made and make them into a curved brush so you can basically draw it out and have a knot on either end of your brush. So the logical next step is to get this onto your curved brush. However, this system here uses one very specific piece of geometry, the one that we created in this tutorial. What I'd like to do is be able to put any kind of rope cord along here. So whether it's traditional rope or whether it's paracord or whatever type of rope material that you find useful, that's the one that we want to be able to put on these curves. So I'm not going to use the same system that we used here to generate this. So the way we're going to start this tutorial is take this not IMM curve brush, which you can either download from here or make yourself using the, the tutorial video. So if you have downloaded that brush or gone through the tutorial, this is what you'll have. Basically a brush with four different knot types on it. And as long as you're drawing on a polymesh 3D object, all you need to do is make your brush size, whatever size you like, and then draw it out and that will draw out that curve with a knot on each end. If you decide you'd like a different kind of knot, you just select the other knot, click again on the curve, and that will update it to that knot type. So that's how this works. The intention for this is obviously this is quite low resolution here. So normally when you're working with this, what you do is you just click on your model once you're finished adjusting your curve. You'll go to Subtool, and because it'll automatically mask whatever object you are on, we'll just say, split unmasked points and that will make this a separate subtool as you see here now that we have it as a separate subtool we can turn on i'll turn off dynamesh that shouldn't be on um, so we just turn on dynamic subdivision and that will give you a nice smooth brush here 
as you can see there are no UVs so what we want to do is take these four brushes and recreate them as unwrapped objects which will allow us to take an alpha and tile them all the way along the surface of our rope. So if you've downloaded the brush or if you followed the tutorial you should have brushes like this and you can just go to the brush menu and you can say to mesh and that will create that mesh for us ready for us to unwrap. I'm going to press shift F so you can see how this is constructed and as you can see it's made of three different poly groups. I'll change the shader to skin shade 4 just so we can see them a little bit more clearly. But basically this is what we need to unwrap. And at this stage now you can unwrap it this in any application that you like. I personally use Maya so I'm going to hit go Z and that will launch a copy of Maya and basically allow me to start unwrapping from there. You can do this in Blender, you can do this in 3ds Max, any DCC of your choice. All we're really going to go through is the principles of it. So with Maya launched I'm going to change my workspace to UV editing and again if you don't use Maya just follow the principles of this. So now that we've changed to our UV mode you can see that I already have UVs on this obviously you don't and this is how, what the whole tutorial is about so what we're going to do is we're just going to create some new UVs and make them camera based just to basically reset the UVs. So these are pretty awful and this is how we're actually going to do the tutorial from here. So the first thing to do is to select all of the faces and again in your own DCC whether that's Blender or Max I'm sure this is possible as well I just don't might know it myself. But I'm just going to select all those faces, I'm going to modify and I'm going to say unitize. That's going to take each individual face and make it the size of the 0 to 1 UV space. So the idea is that we're going to stitch all of these faces together again but before we do that we need to define one cut line down the center of our object and at the ends of our object that are going to separate them out. So I'm going to change to edge mode, I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to double click on an edge. I'm going to go into perspective view and you can see here now as I rotate around that one edge has followed all the way down my model. I'm going to hold down shift and control and double click on the edges of this, on the ends of this rather. I'll probably zoom in and I'll press control to deselect that extra one that I had selected in there like that. So these are the edges that we don't want to weld so I'm going to invert my selection. So in Maya that's control shift I. So that will select every edge except for those and now we can go back in here shift right click and say stitch together. That's going to take all of these faces and now stitch them together except for the ones along the edges here. So as you can see that's unwrapped that now but each of these UVs is perfectly square and that's obviously not the case here so we need to fix that. So we can right click go to UV and then double click on this to select all the UVs inside this shell. From here we can press shift right click unfold and unfold along U. So that's basically just going to stretch them out along this axis. So this is going to straighten them up, basically taking into account any curvature that may happen over here, but it's not going to change the side. I'm going to select the whole thing again, I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to rotate it. Now I rotated left and if I select the ones at the top here you can see we selected the ones at the top. You may have to rotate in the opposite direction if you didn't get them right. So I know inside ZBrush that these three loops here are going to be the ones that tile and repeat. So I can come back into Maya and before I do anything I'm just going to select all these UVs and I'm going to lay them out. So if I go to layout and layout UV that's basically going to pack them into our 0 to 1 UV space. This is what we have here. So obviously this could work. You could tile a brush along here but you're basically going to have to tile the whole thing yourself several times when you're not really taking advantage of the UV space that you have here. As you can imagine if you have a tiling texture from 0 to 1 that's going to this side is going to match this side so if this rope doesn't fill that entire width well then it's not necessarily going to tile wherever that seam is and we want that seam to be perfectly tiling. So I'm looking at my mesh, mesh here and I know that I have three loops and these are the ones that are going to tile. So I can go into my mesh here I can double click on this edge these edges. I'll zoom in I'm going to shift right click and I'm going to cut those. Now if we zoom in a little bit closer you can see that these are actually not perfectly flat so what we can do is just take these UVs here, drag along here and I'm just going to use the scale, I'm pressing R for scale uh, and I'm going to scale these down on this axis just to flatten them out a little bit to make it a little bit easier to tile later on. I'm now going to double click on this, this set of tiling loops that we want and I'm going to press shift and I'm going to say normalize. What that's going to do is make them fit the 0 to 1 UV space. But these ones I don't want to fit them inside the same UV space because these three polygons if I did do that let's just do that 
you can see that these are going to stretch an awful lot because this is a much longer piece of rope than the middle part here. So we need to make them the same size relative to that. So we can do that by double clicking on our original one and we're in here under transform we can get the texel density and I can double click on both of these. I'm holding down shift to do that and set them to the same texel density. So that's going to basically make them the same size as the original here. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it down. Select this one and move it up and you can see this is very close. It's not exact um, and so if we do want to make it exact what we can do is we can just shift right click and normalize and I'm going to choose the option box this time and I'm going to say I just want to normalize it across the u-axis. So that's just going to make it the exact same width as that other one. We can do the same with the other one and just hit apply. So now that we have that we need to align these. So we can bring this down. I'm literally just selecting this entire loop and I'm bringing it down until it's very very close. Same with this one. Bring it until it's very close and then once I'm, I'm in here I'm going to take these end pieces here which didn't unfold very well. I'm going to unfold them once more. They fold a little bit better now. And I'm just going to take these end pieces and it's very important that we make these align. So I'm just going to press this and I'm going to scale them down. And in Maya, if you have these and they're offset anywhere, if you press X and hold down, it will snap to grid points. So we can basically scale all these down and if they don't match, it doesn't really matter. We can press W for move and then X and then basically make them snap to the grid point. This is now going to tile perfectly all the way along here. These end pieces are the only problematic thing in that they're going to take the same tiling texture. So you may have to make some adjustments. But again, we can take the texel density from this, apply it to this and set it so we know how big they should be. It doesn't really matter with these because they're only going to be basically, they're going to have to be manually adjusted afterwards. So I'm just going to take these and move them out of the way. Now that we've done that, we can hit the Go Z button inside Maya and send it back into inside ZBrush. So there's probably a smarter way to do this than the way I'm currently doing it in Maya. I, I genuinely don't know. If there is, just please do let me know in the comments. I'd be fascinated to hear. So we need to do that with each of these four brushes here. Start off, to mesh, send it to Maya, do the unwrap, go to the next one, send it to Maya, do the unwrap, send it back. Once you have, this is now a valid unwrapped mesh. So if you want to check that you have actually got that unwrapped, you just go to your plugin and under UV master, you can hit flatten and that will basically show you that you've unwrapped this. So we can unflatten to bring it back. So the intention here is always going to be that we turn on dynamic subdivision. So I can go to geometry and I can either press D or we can go to dynamic and turn that on. I'm just going to increase the smooth subdivisions to three or four so as it's nice and smooth and I'll press shift F so we see what it looks like. So as I said, the intention here is to use a tiling alpha along this. So first of all, we need an alpha. Alphas don't necessarily have to be black and white. They'll be converted. Any image that you choose will be converted into black or white anyway. This one here from filterforge.com is one that I've used for a rope, but you can find others on Google Maps or on Pinterest. Just look for tiling rope alphas. And whether that's paracord or normal rope or any other type of material, that's totally up to you. Once you have them, all you need to do is go into noise First thing we need to do is make sure we turn on UVs in order to use the UVs. If we don't do that, what will happen is it will just project our alpha based on this camera view. So we must turn this on first. I like to turn down the noise scale and then I'll choose an alpha. So over the years I've collected some and as you can see this is this one here from Filterforge. So for example I can take this image and say OK. I know that that's a tiling alpha and it's going to convert it into black and white for me. Like I said, I'm going to turn off noise scale. I'm also going to turn off mixed basic noise and then I'll basically play with the strength. So the strength will depend on the alpha scale. The stronger you make or the larger you make the scale, the lower you'll have to bring the strength down to. So that's kind of up to you to find a setting that you're happy with. Multiples of one are obviously going to work better. 1.5, 2, stuff like that, 0.25. They're obviously going to work much better because we're not going to get a seam along those lines as per our own wrap. But once you have that, you basically now have your rope texture. If you found settings that you like, you can just go into here to edit and hit save and save it as a file that you can then load and put on any of your other rope brushes. They'll all work in the same way. Like I said, we can choose any alpha. So for example, if you take something that with a kind of a paracord look to it or or something a bit more traditional. Just play with the scale and play with the strength until you find a setting that you like and then say okay. So 
So here I've unwrapped all four brushes and you can see I've renamed them to whatever they were. Clove, Hitch, Slipknot, Halyard Hitch, Noose. You can have spaces in the names if you want. To create the, the curved brush, all we need to do is go to the brush menu and under create at the start here, we say create insert multi mesh. And that's going to look at these four and put them all into a line here for us. This still isn't an actual working brush as yet, a curve brush. We still need to go to stroke and turn on curve mode. And then once we've done that, we need to go to brush and under modifiers, we need to turn on weld points and stretch. It's a good idea to increase the curve resolution to 25, just so you get the smoothest curve possible and to increase the bend angle to 90 to allow you to make tight bends with the curve. Now you'll notice I had the noose selected and if I just dock our menu here for a second, I'm going to take the brush menu and drag this over. You see as soon as I change over to another halyard hitch, while the stroke menu is still on, the curve mode is still on, it's turned off weld points, stretch and curve resolution and angle. So you're going to have to change them for each of these that we have. So once they're all done and you're happy, so now you can save out your brush, just go to brush, save as and save it as this .zbp file. To use this brush, all you need is an object that is a sculptable mesh, but that mesh must be unwrapped. So if we go to Z plugin and hit unwrap, it doesn't matter with symmetry or anything like that. We just need an unwrap. It can be a really bad one or a really good one. It doesn't really matter. But as long as there is, if there is an unwrap on this, now when we draw out this curve, you can see I can press D to turn on dynamic. Yeah, you may be prompted with a message. If you don't like using that, you can also just go to here under dynamic subdiv and turn on dynamic. Increase your subdivision level to whatever you feel is necessary. And you can see now, because this sphere is masked, if I go to surface and noise, as long as I turn on UV and open, I'm going to open up one of our curve brushes here and you can see that this is now applying that texture to that. I can hit OK. This is applied to this, but it's not applied to the sphere. As soon as I actually tap to accept this brush, if I remove the mask, it's going to apply that texture to the sphere as well. So if you don't necessarily want that, just leave that masked and separate the two out. So you can do that by going to Subtool, Split and saying, so like I said, we can take any of these curve brushes and put them on and it's going to take on the existing noise. So if you want to change it, just go back down to surface, edit and open up whichever curve brush you want and change the tiling as necessary. Once you're happy with it, just tap anywhere and then that will be that will be finalized for you. Now, obviously, this doesn't actually displace the geometry as such. So while this works inside ZBrush, it's not going to work inside another application. However, what you can do there is you can say, well, if, if you do want this amount of geometry on here, you actually want it to look like, for example, this. You're going to have to give it enough geometry to actually displace it. So right now, this actually has 1,564 points. We can even separate these out by selecting one and going to sub tool and saying split, split the hidden ones. And now we're down to 1000 points. So 1000 points you can see is not going to be enough to deform this surface. So what we need to do is go to geometry and I'm just going to apply that dynamic to make these subdivisions that we had here into real subdivisions. So we've gone from a thousand points up to a quarter of a million. Uh, we can divide that further up to 1 million, 4 million, whatever it takes to actually get this resolution right. Go to our surface and now we can just say apply to mesh. And that's actually going to apply that as if it was actual geometry. And now we're actually displacing this geometry. So we have that finalized. Now, you, as I said, you'll notice that up at the end here, you may need to do a little bit of sculpting on, on the end pieces here, depending on what look you're going for. But from here now you can apply any rope texture to all of your rope curve brushes. So as I said, this is just an experiment to see if brushes that are given out for free, what the difference is in sales of them versus or in downloads of them versus ones that are actually sold. All future brushes will be free. This is a once off. So yeah, please don't go nuts. One last thing to note is that this brush will work with both ZBrush 2022.0.7 or ZBrush Classic as it's more than likely going to be known and also ZBrush 2023 if you import it in there. So it should work with both versions.